Bird SCPs. Birds have represented a lot of different concepts throughout history, from symbols of peace, to death, to wisdom, to freedom. They're certainly a bit of a unique class of animals, being the only known living dinosaurs, and it's said that their closest living relatives are the crocodilians. They're a popular foodstuff, a common topic of art, a continual presence in folklore and mythology, and of course a regular subject for internet memes. So it's not surprising that, much like dogs, cats, rodents, and plenty of other animals, there are bird SCPs. Let's take a look. Let's begin with perhaps the most well-known bird contained by the Foundation, SCP-2337. 2337 is a male corn crake that is sapient, sentient, and capable of speech. Notably, all of its vocalizations are extremely loud, with a minimum observed volume of 90 decibels, and a maximum volume that's been redacted from the record. Though this ability can and has caused damage to Foundation personnel's hearing, the bird is oblivious of its ability and is generally friendly. Its speech takes the form of a language tangentially related to English, often appearing to be word salad, but on closer inspection can have meaning in English through a series of vague innuendos, metaphors, rhymes, and arbitrary insertions of the word cac. SCP-2337 itself will answer to the name Dr. Spanko. Initial reports of the bird came from unusual noises from a field in the UK, which led to its capture. Upon containment, it appeared to take hostile action against agents, emitting blasts of noise that ruptured three agents' eardrums. Upon later examination, it was revealed that it was merely attempting to make friendly conversation. Since its containment, several sapient creatures contained by the Foundation have displayed knowledge of its existence, and have expressed interest in a meeting with 2337. The reason for this has yet to be understood, though it's believed that 2337 has some sort of status as an authority figure to several particularly dangerous beings. When asked to elaborate about this, 2337 replied, it done be shall forth, able sauce am tricky mayonnaise forsooth, Aunt Ruth, come packing with store brand hostility cakes for mouth stuff. Slavey kins grew boarded and bearded from Chesapeake Bay to unknown Kadath, my good Fibbert. The three ringed hobo stack over and over, Alakazam, Cack. The interviewer then proceeded to try to have 2337 explain in normal English, to no avail, until the doctor themselves said, Snackutations, Dr. Spanko, CAC. U.M. Authoritator? Explainerate. This, however, caused an outburst of anger from 2337, resulting in it cacking angrily before climbing onto the doctor's face and attempting to peck his eyes out. 2337 was promptly tranquilized, and the doctor received only minor scratches, but this has been the only time that 2337 displayed hostility. Next we have SCP-4975, which is a bit less humorous than the last one. It's a vaguely humanoid entity, with various avian attributes, most notably a beak. Its body structure is long and thin overall and its limbs taper off into formless extremities, lacking distinct digits. A thick, hardened skin layer covers the entirety of its body, including its beak. Its cervical vertebrae are not interconnected, and appear to be able to move independently of one another. The entity continuously rotates the vertebrae one at a time, from back to front, ending with its head, in a rhythmic fashion. This produces a clicking or cracking sound with each movement, and it only stops moving its neck in this manner when it is preparing for an attack. 
4975 has been observed to stalk future victims for extended periods of time before finally deciding to attack, up to periods of 10 months or more. It then proceeds to kill its victims by means of its appendages, which it uses to bludgeon and tear the victim's body. It will always then eat the cadaver afterwards, and an average adult human appears to last it about three months. 4975 is thought to be the subject of multiple folktales from Germany, its country of origin. Evidence of these folktales date back as far as 1538, with both written and visual artistic depictions, along with multiple German nursery rhymes that are thought to concern 4975. Despite the entity's now permanent presence in its containment cell, new incidents and sightings continue to be reported in Germany leading to a Foundation investigation. Foundation operatives looked into a report from a citizen who had told local law enforcement that he had been hearing a rhythmic clicking noise for over four months, and that somebody was stalking him. The operatives took the man into their custody, and told law enforcement that he had experienced paranoia and auditory hallucinations due to side effects of the chemotherapy he was receiving at that time. They then proceeded to order the man to show them where he had last seen 4975, near the Black Forest. Body camera footage shows the group walking in a wooded area, until the civilian begins frantically looking around and clutching his chest. After a few minutes go by, he freezes in place and points towards a tree. There is nothing visible on the camera, however, and the agents seem confused although the man panics and stumbles backwards. According to surveillance footage, back at 4975's containment cell, it stopped rotating its neck at this exact time, and was instead staring motionless at the southeastern corner of its cell. Suddenly, the civilian is forcibly thrown to the ground, and is struck multiple times in the head and torso by an unseen aggressor. Several operatives fire at the presumed attacker, but hit nothing, and one attempts to grab the man and drag him away, but a large wound starts appearing on his midriff. The operative gives up trying to drag him, as it seems to only be tearing open the wound further. One operative talks into a walkie-talkie, and proceeds to raise his firearm and shoot the man in the head. After a few moments, Strips of flesh start to get ripped off the corpse one by one, and once they are detached from the body, they vanish. In the containment cell, 4975 appears to be eating something, despite not being fed. Reclassification to Keter class is currently pending. Moving on to something a bit sadder, SCP-1192 is a juvenile male cockatoo of a species normally native to southeast Australia, approximately 33 centimeters in length. The bird appears to be sapient, and exhibits intelligence and common knowledge consistent with that of a human child between the ages of 6 and 8. Its appearance is unusually disheveled, as it appears to be unable or unwilling to preen itself and has difficulty flying despite being essentially healthy and uninjured. Close examinations have shown a slight, heeled-over contusion on the back of the bird's head, but no internal injury or damage was ever found. It was first discovered and brought into containment by a Foundation agent working undercover in the Newark Police Department in New Jersey. It's believed at this time that 1192 began following the agent and trying to attract his attention because of the perception of an authority figure in police uniform. The agent became suspicious due to the bird's unusual species and erratic behavior, leading to containment. Shortly after initial containment, experimentation was performed in which the bird was introduced to a multitude of objects in a controlled environment in order to deduce its abilities. Upon being introduced to the testing chamber, it immediately gravitated to a pencil and paper, and began to attempt to write crude sentences. Its spelling is rough, but legible, and it asks the researcher in the chamber 
who he is. The doctor in turn asks who it is, and the bird replies that it's Timmy, and asks where he is. The doctor says that he's at a hospital, and asks if he knows what happened to him. The bird writes no, and then writes that he wants to go home. After several minutes, and with some difficulty, the bird managed to write down an address for a residential home in Montana. Agents sent to the residence determined that the home is inhabited by a married couple as well as their seven-year-old son, Timothy. Agents assigned to monitor the family have so far not observed anything out of the ordinary. Since 1192 is unable to manipulate objects with enough coordination to play with the video games it requested, and it shows little interest in other toys, it has instead taken to scribbling and making crude drawings. A list of notable materials includes several pages of unrelated words, presumed to be writing practice, several pages of crude drawings, including race cars, airplanes, and fictional animals and monsters, a single page with the words, Why am I a bird? as well as several more indecipherable sentences a drawing of what appears to be a small child holding the hands of two adults, although the child is scratched out and the paper is ripped. The reverse side of the page has the words, I want my mom. Finally, a single page with 126 instances of the word mom and 76 instances of the word home. The SCP universe is not a kind one, and while I'd like to think that the Foundation can someday help this poor bird in some way, I think we all know that that won't happen. Let's move away from the sad little bird and take a look at a big angry bird, SCP-1160. 1160 is a massive, paranatural avian entity located beneath a mountain on a redacted island. Recovered documents indicate that the entity, which was referred to as El Ratanero, meaning the buzzard, by the original inhabitants of the island, appeared in 1765 and began a series of aggressive attacks against the fishing villages of the island. Because of its anomalous traits, the inhabitants were unable to properly combat the entity. A manuscript from the era reads, The buzzard came again last night, larger than before. Its cry we heard first, the great gnashing of a terrible demon. It appears not like the mainland creatures, but something far worse, pulled from some devil's pit in eons past. The buzzard tore through our defenses, and we had no choice but to flee to the sea, or take shelter in the earth and pray that it would not root us out. Every night that the buzzard returns, he is more, and we are less. While 1160 can sustain damage, it's considered to be indestructible for all practical purposes, as it's capable of rapidly and fully regenerating lost or damaged tissue, and is able to withstand all forms of conventional firearms or explosives below 300 kilotons. Additionally, it possesses a number of insect-like optical organs situated around its head and back, capable of providing it with a virtually 360 degree perspective of the area around it. These traits, combined with its natural brute strength and speed, make it particularly deadly in close combat. However, its weakness is that it's negatively affected by human cognition, meaning that the more humans that are aware of it, the smaller and weaker it becomes. While it's believed that 1160 could feasibly continue to decrease in size indefinitely, the limits of this effect, if any, are unknown. During the initial discovery of the bird, a team of Foundation scientists hypothesized that the sudden, sharp drop in aggression by the bird was in some way related to the arrival of personnel on the island. 
After a routine amnestic cycling of Class D individuals assigned to the island, however, 1160 attacked both the Foundation facility and a nearby fishing village. During the attack, the entity was noted as being highly aggressive and notably larger, inadvertently resulting in the loss of a number of personnel and island inhabitants. In response to this discovery, Foundation assets were allocated to the creation of Protocol Tango 77, codenamed Saturday Morning, which was begun with the intent of spreading awareness of the bird to a large consistent group of human subjects. In 1953, after a 10 year period of development, a Foundation front company, Standard Products, released the Super Coco Pows breakfast cereal, heavily marketed towards children. The mascot of the brand was Bradbury Buzzard, a cartoon caricature resembling 1160, who was featured prominently on the box and contained a number of subtle, anomalous, mimetic triggers intended to plant specific pieces of information about 1160 into the subconscious of its targets. Over time, these triggers have been adjusted slightly to avoid over-proliferation of sensitive information, and the most recent product surveys have returned positive results. Where once, consumers would reply that Bradbury Buzzard is a mean buzzard who lives on a secret island and hurts people, consumers now tend to respond that he's a mischievous little bird who lives on a tropical island and tries to nab Super Coco Pows from various young children. Meanwhile, thanks to the protocol, 1160 has reduced from 85 meters in height at the time of its discovery to now roughly 25 centimeters. Unique problems call for unique solutions, as always. Moving on to something that is very much not a threat. SCP-514 is a flock of homing pigeons that project a roughly 500 meter radius zone of influence around themselves. This zone of influence renders every known type of weapon inoperable, and often destroys affected weapons after prolonged exposure. Firearms will immediately jam or misfire, explosives will be rendered inert, and melee weapons will decay into dust. Additionally, sentient beings within the zone of influence will have their violent emotions and intents suppressed. Interviews with staff and civilians who had been exposed to the zone reported that they felt very calm and content, even when they felt stressed or angry just moments before. Currently there appears to be no harmful or lasting effects to being exposed to the zone of influence as rigorous physical and psychological screening of individuals afterwards showed nothing out of the ordinary. SCP-514 was first discovered when numerous reports of weapons stockpiles were reported as having been destroyed in numerous African nations. While the initial reports were written off as poor maintenance on the part of the owners, additional reports of sightings of a flock of homing pigeons which are uncommon in Africa, garnered the Foundation's interest. An investigation team was sent to track the pigeons, when they encountered a team claiming to be affiliated with the Mana Charitable Foundation, who were also tracking the birds. The MCF is a group of interest that seeks to do good in the world thanks to the potential of anomalies, and these members admitted that they had released the birds in an effort to end all conflict in Africa, despite not having a reliable way to control their movements. Unfortunately, the MCF was apparently unaware that the aggression suppression effects were only temporary, and they would resume hostilities with improvised or primitive weaponry once the birds left. Additionally, the random movements of the birds caused only certain regions to be disarmed, leaving them vulnerable to invasion by the unaffected neighbors. They're a little confused, but they've got the spirit. It took another three weeks before an MTF were able to control the bird's movements thanks to a redacted piece of tech. 
The MCF members then challenged the Foundation team for possession of both 514 and the redacted tech. Since both parties were still under the bird's effects, the conflict was resolved through a single round of rock, paper, scissors, with the Foundation being the victor. The MCF members then fled the area before they could be further questioned, leaving the origin of the birds unknown. Various tests were performed using the birds, showing that all firearms failed to fire while inside the zone, with later inspection showing that all weapons suffered from various mechanical failures that rendered the weapons useless. Ammunition exposed to the zone also failed to fire when loaded into weapons not affected by the zone, as chemical propellant was found to be rendered completely inert. Similarly, various explosives such as grenades and dynamite were all rendered inert immediately upon exposure, and any detonators or detonating components suffered mechanical and electronic failures. Melee weapons, such as knives, swords, and other medieval weapons were all rendered useless through accelerated rate of decay, except for a steak knife and a baseball bat. When the steak knife and bat were used in a threatening manner, however, both items also experienced accelerated decay. Various weapons of mass destruction were tested as well, such as nerve gas, weaponized anthrax, and a tactical nuclear warhead, all of which were rendered completely inert. All samples, including the nuclear material, were completely degraded, and instruments recorded no radiation. For the warhead, the electronic detonator was also rendered useless. The zone of influence appears to be able to render any conventional weapon inoperable, and the damage each weapon suffers is directly proportional to how long the weapon is exposed to the zone of influence, with all weapons degrading into dust in under an hour. The zone of influence is also somehow selective, being able to discern items that are actively designed as weapons from items that are potentially dangerous but not specifically designed to be weapons. 514 does appear to be able to discern when an item will be used for violent intent, however. It remains unclear whether the bird's ability to selectively target certain weaponry and discern hostile intent is a property inherent to its zone of influence, or if it's directly controlled on the part of the birds themselves, through some form of group intelligence. As for humans, live subjects were exposed to the zone of influence for an extended period of time, and were divided into two groups with one being volunteers drawn randomly from the general population, and the second being Class D personnel with a history of violent behavior. Tests showed that the D-Class's violent tendencies were completely suppressed, and acted in a similar fashion to the other group. Suppression of the D-Class's violent tendencies occurs even after they leave the zone of influence though the duration is directly proportional to the time spent inside the zone. Several high-ranking members in the Foundation's military branch, as well as various associated government agencies, have expressed interest in weaponizing 514, as there's great strategic and tactical value in neutralizing an entire army's arsenal in a short period of time. There's also requests to test 514's zone of influence against several Keter-level SCPs. O5 Command is currently deliberating the issue. So far, all of the tests have been performed thanks to the piece of tech that allows the Foundation to somewhat control their movement, but all attempts to actually capture them for containment and study have failed. Every agent, doctor, and researcher sent to capture them steadfastly refused to complete their mission due to a reaction to their zone of influence. Attempts to remotely capture the flock through the use of drones or long-range devices have resulted in the destruction of all equipment involved. It's evident that 514 interprets any attempts to capture it as a hostile act, triggering the nullification effects of its zone of influence in response. Again, it's unclear whether this is a property inherent to the zone of influence 
or is regulated through a group intelligence among the flock. All of the members of the MTF tasked with the bird's surveillance are required to be proficient in various non-violent competitive activities, including sports, board games, card games, video games, trivia, riddles, and rock, paper, scissors. An O5 expressed outrage that the fate of one of their SCPs could be decided on the outcome of rock, paper, scissors, but the captain of the MTF assured them that they have nothing to fear, as they're dead serious about these matters. O511 asked if they couldn't find a more dignified game as their primary conflict resolution method, as seeing two grown men in all black tactical gear taking a children's card game so seriously is off-putting. There are plenty more bird SCPs, but we do need to save some for more bird SCPs. So let's just do one more. SCP-2703 2703 is the message for a good time call 092-791-697-5186 that manifests on newspaper announcements, advertisements, websites, and on public restroom doors in the city of Manchester, UK. Should an individual call the number on a telephone of any kind after reading the message, an entity will manifest within two to five hours, usually three meters in front of the individual. This effect is triggered only if the subjects are aware of the literal meaning of the message, and if they have read an original instance of 2703. Copies and photographs of the message do not display its anomalous properties. The entity that appears is a tripedal avian creature, similar to a Eurasian eagle owl, possessing elongated caprine horns and leperine ears, standing 1.77 meters tall. It possesses five tentacle-like appendages of adjustable length located on its back, each of a different color, and it's noted that these appendages are safe for human consumption tests confirmed that the blood of subjects having eaten these appendages contained high levels of serotonin and dopamine. The entity has thus far been fluent in every language presented to it, but communicates solely with the subject that called it. Its favorite method of communication is by singing in a mezzo-soprano voice, but it will stop if asked to. Despite referring to itself as Countess of Folas, Duchess of Fatima, and Marquisette of Despria, it equally responds to any given name. The entity's only apparent goal is to entertain the subjects with pleasurable recreational activities, such as attending theatrical performances. It does so by teleporting the subjects and itself in a location chosen by the subjects. This effect is limited only to theaters, movie theaters, restaurants, and pubs. Following a 24-hour period, the bird will demanifest after thanking the subjects with a 50-second long song performed in a operatic style where it displays its gratitude towards them. However, should the subject politely ask the bird to leave before the 24 hours are up, it will demanifest following a 20 second song. We're given a few testing logs that the Foundation performed with the bird, starting with a D class that asked it to teleport him to a Foundation front restaurant that was evacuated ahead of time. The two spent the next hour talking about various topics, such as fate and the meaning of love, with the D class ordering roast beef and the bird ordering two kilograms of raw tuna. The D-Class was then ordered to politely ask it to leave, and following its demanifestation, a total of 290.97 pounds materialized within the restaurant's cash register. Another test with a D-Class was done to determine in what circumstances the bird will materialize currency, with the procedure the same as the last test. Unfortunately, the D-Class immediately screamed in terror upon the bird's manifestation, 
despite being made aware of the anomaly's nature. The bird dematerialized shortly after, showing signs of great distress before it disappeared. The next test, with a less impressionable D-Class, resulted in the bird materializing seven hours after the call was made, instead of the usual two to five hours. The bird talked in a monotone voice and refused to eat anything, dematerializing without warning 25 minutes afterwards. Another test was done, this time with a female D-Class, using the same procedure as the previous ones. This time, the bird spoke with the D-Class about various topics, sung in a mezzo-soprano voice, and ordered 10 kilograms of various feline meats. When the D-Class was ordered to politely ask it to leave, the bird asked the D-Class to embrace it before leaving. The D-Class was ordered to embrace it, and after it demanifested, a total of 10,000 pounds materialized within the restaurant's cash register. The researchers concluded that the bird seemingly recovered from its depression, and it's noted that the bird has displayed this kind of behavior to all female personnel. Following these tests, the manifestations of the message around Manchester have doubled, but now it manifests exclusively on women's public restroom doors, and its anomalous effects are triggered exclusively by female subjects. When people think of horror or science fiction, birds don't often come to mind, outside of a few specific cases, but the SCP universe as usual can take just about anything and make it unique. Would a lot change if all of these SCPs were, for example, slugs instead of birds? Probably not much, but a screeching bird is funnier than most other animals, for some reason, and anything with a beak is just a little bit creepy. As mentioned, there are plenty more bird SCPs out there, along with plenty of other animals, but for now, Let's consider this your daily dose of bird.